For centuries, summer has been synonymous with the sound of leather on willow, echoing across community cricket pitches up and down the country. But traditional village cricket has hit a sticky wicket and the number of adults playing has fallen. Here at Lockton in North Yorkshire, the old cricket club was forced to close. A shortage of players caused its demise. The ground became overgrown and a herd of sheep had even taken up residence in the outfield. We used to drive past this ground and we'd say how sad it was. It was just a sort of matted old field. And then after about three years, we said, well, why don't we do something about it? It's been, I don't know, probably a couple of months' work to get it to, to what it is now. Um, we have some fantastic guys from the village and some fantastic guys from outside as well. We're we using out. scythes? Uh, huge, no, huge we, we, we opted for a massive tractor. Uh, we thought size would take, you know, a bit too long. <laughs> what do you think a place like this means to a local village or a community? For me, Yorkshire is like quintessentially village cricket. It's like one of the things we have over everybody else is to have all these amazingly strong villages. Um, and the cricket club can really be the focal point of the community. The whole thing is run by volunteers, so they've asked me to help out in preparing the wicket for tonight's big game. Mm. Can I have a go at the mowing? Dan Vasey is the club's vice captain and has been central to getting the ground back into pristine condition. So what do you need to do to get the wicket ready for tonight's match? We can do with it as dry as possible and as, as much grass off it as possible. <laughs> Are you finding it easier to push or pull? It's getting it, getting it started, the <laughs> harder part. You don't need a gym in Lockton. <laughs> Tonight, they're hosting a game against historic rival Slingsby in the Feversham League. Captain Jim Boys is hoping to steer his team to victory. Quite emotional for me tonight, cos I used to love it up here. That's where it all began for me. So, uh, tonight's game, how are you feeling about it? Oh, confident. You have to be confident, are you? Heads or tails? Heads. It's heads. I think we failed. Field first, yeah. OK. Yeah. Let's see you batting. Best of luck. Lockton's batsmen head to the wicket and race into an early lead. 19 for one. Hey! They're rattling them out, though. What do you like doing, batting or bowling? Batting, even though I'm no good. <laughs> Batting's more fun, isn't it? Yeah. Is this your idea of fun? I'm a fitness coach, so right. Right, as far as I'm concerned, there's not enough movement going on there. <laughs> and when they get a six, apparently, they don't have to run. Well, I think they should yeah. definitely run up and down six times. Yes, just, <laughs> just for the exercise just potential of that. Uh, yeah. I think some of them need it. <laughs> That's 69 for five. 69 for five. Club president Chester Brown has been involved in the village game for 63 years. There used to be eight farms in Lockton Village and most of the farmers had a son or a farm worker mm -hmm. and they would play cricket. Yeah. Um, so there's not so many farms, so there's not so many, not so many young men about to play cricket. It's a barbecue tonight, isn't it? Well, it is, yes. Is that part of the appeal of cricket, do you think? Uh, it's the, the food, the drink, the... It, the... it could be, yeah, it could be. <laughs> but you might be looking at one or two of them, it probably is. And the spectators are clearly enjoying the return of village cricket. The cricket ground is just one of the kind of central focal points of the village. And it's a heart and soul of a place, really. I just realised it was on tonight, so just this is the first game I've come to watch, but I'll be coming back. Lockton beat Slingsby by 41 runs to make it five wins in a row. Everyone's keen to celebrate the revival of the village game that many thought had been lost forever. Absolutely love at moment, to be fair. I couldn't have want, dreamt of it going much better than that. The win first game back on my own soil, it's brilliant. That's it now, we're here to stay. 
Well, the excitement at Lockton <laughs> isn't quite as we witnessed earlier this month at Lords. Oh, my word, Mike. I mean, you captained England from, what, 86 to, to 88? Yeah. For all of those that were celebrating the win but didn't quite understand how it happened. What, what, what did go on? I have to say I didn't either because... Uh, when, <laughs> when, no one when did. It, when it got to a tie, we were all jumping up and down anyway. And when, yeah. when England was sort of 80, 86 for four or something, we were really struggling. Joss Butler came in with Stokesy and they got us close and, and then we should have won it and then they took it back from us and it just went backwards and forwards. And when we tied, I thought, is it going to be run rate? And then I heard super over. That's the first time it's ever been done. So we had the super over and that got tied too. And you just wonder, now what happens? And we're all sitting down there. I've never seen so many people jumping up and down. Uh, and, and for those of you who are wondering what did happen, we got more boundaries than New Zealand did. But uh, New Zealand guys were fantastic. There were a lot of things that went on in that final with the six overthrows, somebody catching the ball on the line. And the New Zealand has really played the spirit of the game at its very best. Isha, you were saying we'll never see that again. I don't think we will. I mean, first of all, I don't think we'll ever have a super over again, potentially not, or it definitely won't be a count back to, to boundaries. Um, but it, for that all to happen in a World Cup final, it's, it's a script that won't be written again. It, it was just simply sensational. The atmosphere at Lords, completely electric. I was pitch side gap, and I went off on a run completely, in completely the opposite direction <laughs> to the boys. And Ben Stokes, he fell backwards onto the floor, and it was just complete elation around the ground. Um, but the yeah. tension as well was... We've got to say as well, like, our women are equally as remarkable. Yes, yep. so uh, double World Cup champion yeah, we are. two years ago at the home <laughs> of cricket. And it must be said, the women have never lost a World Cup on home so soil. So uh, fantastic that the boys have now joined them. And uh, Gat got very close in 87, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I got very, very, very close, sad. We got in the final. Almost. Uh, almost. <laughs> that, that's why I was hoping we were going to win this time, because yeah, it really, yeah. really that, that sort of similar scenario. But of course, Mike. I mean, you know, it's always for you about the next generation that are coming through. And that really is what all of this initiative is at the moment and what's going on this summer. So, Isha, I don't know if you could just give us a bit of an idea of what the, you know, how it all works for the young well, kids. Yeah, it's really about trying to capitalise on such a magnificent opportunity. Two years ago, when the women won, all of the kids, boys and girls, were going away with a bat in their hands. Yeah. And this summer, the ECB have partnered up with the, their initiative, uh, which is All Stars, targeting five to eight-year-olds. Um, and there are 10,000 taster sessions for cricket all around the country. Um, there's a chance for, for your kids to get involved by it's going free. online. It's free. It's, it's, it's 10,000 places yeah. um, on the All Stars cricket website you can go along to that find out where you are closest to you can enter your postcode and mm -hmm. then just go along and, and try out some cricket it's amazing talking of eight-year-olds we've got two brilliant <laughs> two brilliant guys that want to give it a shot oh, here they are <laughs> <laughs> this could go very wrong <laughs> so who's going to be our first bowler aiming at bob who's going to go first who wants to go are you you want to go? go? Okay, good luck with this one. Here we go, just lining up, going straight down. Woo! Very good. Oh! oh Very good. Next, here we go. Is it me? Hold up. Oh. Come on, Paul. Oh, it's it. It's it. He's doing the runs even before he's hit the ball. Oh, oh God! <laughs> he's fallen over again. <laughs> yeah, another one. True to form. Oh, very good, very good, very good, very good. Oh. Now, Mike, we should also mention oh. the ashes are starting, aren't they, on yeah, Thursday? They are. Now, what goes through your body when you know that the ashes are starting? It's one of those, one of those wonderful times where you, you get... And I suppose I can only like it say, Man City playing Man United or Tottenham playing Arsenal. It's that real sort of thing that goes back many years, back to the 1880s when we started playing yeah. the ashes. And every time, it's the only time I ever feel like I want to play cricket again. Um, is that right? It, it, because it is it's really fantastic. And there's nothing like it. And that's no disrespect to all the other teams. No, 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 no. It's no, just no. England and Australia has been going for so long. Yeah. It's just a wonderful thing to play in. Well, you've got a ball in you. I have. I have. Oh, yes. Yeah. Would you just. Would you, would you just bowl one down there? Go on. Here we go. Here he is. Mike Cunning, ladies and gentlemen. Right, it's Paul versus Mike Gatting. Are you ready for this, Paul? Oh, no! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no. He's lining up beautifully. He's over the top. It's straight down the middle. Oh! <laughs> Very close indeed. Absolutely. Come on, Bob, get in there quick. You go for it, Mike. Go on, Mike. Go on, Mike. Go on. Oh, it's a bit wide, Hi. but you can carry on if you want to. We should say a very big thank you to Bob and to Paul. I'm <laughs> living great this evening. You can catch them on Gone Fishing. Oh, it's on Friday, 8 o'clock on BBC Two. And thank you to Mike and Isha.
three All-Stars cricket places are available across the country. And tune in to tips and specials online and on BBC Radio for the Ashes starting Thursday. Oh, yes. Hang on, we're going to have a bit of a change of music now because this music can only mean one thing. Tomorrow, we are going to officially announce the first three names of oh. Strictly 2019. Let the speculation begin. It's not Mike, I can oh, say that. Plus, days. Hollywood star Jada Pinkett-Smith will be here. Thank you so much. Bye See bye. you later. Good night. Bye-bye.